I keep getting asked, have the new officers available for transporter patterns changed or shifted my priorities? Short answer, yes. Long answer, So back on March 19th of 2022, which is just over three months ago at the time of recording, we released a video on transporter pattern priorities. And to par for the course, about the time we get around to making said video, Scopely changes it up and makes a liar out of Dan. Maybe it's my superpower. Quick, drop a comment down below on a video topic, especially one that you want Scopely to mix up, and let's test the theory. Leave a like and subscribe while you're down there as well. This time around to help future proof this video for those coming to watch it a little bit later on, there are currently 21 officers available for transporter patterns. If you do not know what transporter patterns are, check out the video in the card up in the top right here. Currently, the officers available are William T. Riker, Sela, 3 of 11 currently, but possibly 12, 13, 200, whatever by the time you see this video, TOS Kirk, Giorgio, TOS Spock, Harry Mudd, Eurydice, Mud, aka Meth Mud, yes, that's a thing, James T. Kirk, Gorkon, Nero, Kang, Liviana Sharvenik, Alexander Marcus, Christopher Pike, Carol Marcus, Gary Mitchell, Khan Noonien Singh, Crass, and 6 of 11. If you have more choices than these 21 that we have just listed, then look for an update to this video. And no matter what, if you see 5 of 11 or 12 or whatever, available for transporter patterns, assume she's a very high priority to get unlocked to at least rank 1 ensign. Scopely, if you're watching this, hint, hint. A couple quick disclaimers that we really need to get out of the way first are that the meta is always shifting in this game. Priorities can get shuffled around, so hang out on our Discord server, and don't be afraid to ask not only myself, but any member of our fantastic community for recommendations. But they are just that. Ultimately, play this game in the way that brings you the most enjoyment and satisfaction. Disregard what Dan says if there is ever any conflict. Additionally, priorities do shift depending on what your playstyle is, whether you lean heavier towards PvP, PvE, or a hybrid approach of the two. We'll try to cover all three of those here, but check the comments down below because I do believe we have hands down the best comment section on all of YouTube, and they often help fill in any gaps that I miss and keep me honest. Thank you guys. Without further ado, number one on my list, still the reigning transporter pattern champion is Christopher Pike. If you do not have this guy unlocked to rank one, you need him desperately because those cadet and TNG hostile crews will only take you so far. Rank one is sufficient in most cases because he will be the captain and that will scale with your synergy, not with your rank. His officer ability is great for leveling ships, but because of exocomps and research and other officers, it's not a must have as much as his captain's ability, which really helps you eke out as many hostile kills as possible. Moving on to number two, previously this slot was held by Giorgio, but for me I'm going to drop her down a peg or two to make way for a couple of the newcomers. The second slot for me by a very narrow margin is now going to be William T. Riker, but only just barely. Since his debut, Epic Riker, not you next gen Riker, has been a solid choice for many Armada crews and you will be running an awful lot of Armadas in this game. He pairs very well with Beverly Crusher, but there's still no great sourcing option for her yet, which is why I'd say he does not quite overtake Pike in your priority list. Rank 1 is sufficient before moving on, as he will very likely be your captain for some higher damage Armada crews. However, nipping at Riker's heels in the number 3 slot for me is now going to be 3 of 11. Not a lot to say here besides this being the assimilated counterpart to our beloved T'Pring, with an even higher protected cargo ability, and you can still pair it with T'Pring. Mining stinks. So if you can get more protected cargo to make it stink a little less, it's a solid choice. Again, rank 1 here will suffice, as each subsequent level for the officer ability will only net you a plus 50% to the base, but that initial 300% that you get at rank 1 is an incredible boost for all players. So at this point, the list is going to diverge a bit whether you are a PvP player or a PvE player. If you consider yourself hybrid, we're going to stay on the PvP track because you're going to want to stay focused on those PvP officers. If you're not PvP at all, I still recommend you pick up those PvP officers because likely you either haven't really gave PvP an honest try or you're bad at it because you just haven't done it enough. Sorry, I'm not trying to be mean. That's just the way all of us really were before we started getting into it. We were all bad at it, so don't feel bad that you don't have that experience yet. 
which is why I recommend all players go ahead and pick up those PvP crews. You never know when the PvP bug is going to bite you and you're going to wish that you had them. However, if you're still not convinced and all you want to do in this game is PvE, then you can go ahead and skip to the next entry number five on the list. So for me personally, this slot is going to be where I've settled Giorgio now. I left her for PvP burning crews especially, or just as a normal burning crew because Nero has such high stats and he's great on away team assignments. Once more, rank one is sufficient to get her started before you move on on the list. So here, my number five pick is going to be six of 11. He is still in a lot of Armada crews, but less than previously with Riker being an option now. And there are some other great Armada people since his debut. Coupling that with the fact that you really want to have five of 11 to get the most out of him, and she's really hard to source right now, is gonna put him below Giorgio on my list. Now again, if you are not a PVPer at all, you can jump all the way to number 10 because these next officers are going to be PVP focused. Yeah, if you only play like half the game, then you're only gonna get like half these officers. Previously, we nested the Trinity or Triad officers right here below six of 11, but now that James Tiberius Kirk is on the scene, I'm gonna recommend, especially for PVP players, that you unlock him to rank one. He's still on several PVP crew metas, and the TOS crew is really the only acceptable crew to put a Spock on the bridge of the USS Enterprise. Aside from when you're being run through Armada's by higher operations players, then you can drop all of your Spocks on the Enterprise and put them in timeout in the Soul System like I do, just to make sure you don't inadvertently get the Armada party killed. See the Spock bug video on this channel if you have no idea what I'm talking about. So at this point, we'll be getting kind of back on track with where we were in March, but with a handful of minor adjustments. Number seven for me is going to be getting back to those Battle Triangle, Triad, Trinity, whatever you want to call them, officers. That's Marcus. Alexander Marcus, not Carol, Kang, and Sharvenik. You're going to want to get them all up to about rank three when they start being somewhat effective. You likely won't finish these out until after you've maxed out Kirk, Nero, Gorkon, and or Khan so that you get another source of those transporter patterns and have them more free flowing at that point, but they can still be effective against many players at rank three. TOS Spock fills the number eight slot for me right behind rank three for Marcus, Kang, and Sharvenik for the PVPers, especially for Raiders. TOS Spock is great for base defense crews. Your base defense crews come in handy for players who frequently find themselves logging onto the game right at the tail end of a shield. Perhaps it'll buy you a little bit more time if you didn't get back to your game soon enough to be able to put another shield up between the 10 minute auto bubble and possibly making it a little harder for people to go ahead and crack your base. But mostly when I say a base defense crew, it is for when I am trying to raid somebody else and there are defenders involved, which the amalgam makes it a lot more enticing for me to go ahead and continue persevering through those raid scenarios when defenders show up because if I can keep them tied up and still get several scoops out of my amalgam then I'm just preparing with their resources and it doesn't really bother me at all. So I keep a TOS Spock and a couple other officers crewed on ships in my own base so if somebody were to try to crack me or do some damage to me most cases I can shrug it off. Rank 1 will do for now since you can source some of those shards if you built your trade XP for critting the infrequently appearing epic which means that you have to have your operations level 39 and done the research to unlock them. OA team assignment, explore galactic barrier. Though likely you'll circle back around later and start buying his shards once you've maxed some of these other officers on the list. Number nine, this guy did not previously have a spot on our list, but since Rom is not only in the game, but now is the de facto base cracking captain, Crass is going to make our list for that same base defense crew reasoning as TOS Spock because his officer ability will help counter ROM, which most people are going to use if they're going to be trying to crack your base. So I like to keep one ship with Crass on it full synergy, another ship with TOS Spock on it full synergy. If you want to know exactly what that setup looks like, shout out to my buddy Synop, who is the one who gave it to me. I'll be happy to do a video on what that looks like as well. So drop a comment down below if you'd like to see that. In addition to being the anti-ROM, He's also not bad to pair with Claw for a speed crew that doesn't hull breach your own ship and get you killed. Rip Berserker crew. Looking at you, Pan. And just like our number eight spot TOS Spock, when we say base defense, we're talking about defending your own base from people in an active raid situation. Shielding is still far better than TOS Spock or Crass for protecting your sweet, sweet loot while your eyeballs are not on the game. For our purposes, rank one is sufficient because it'll either just be sitting in the captain's chair and getting synergy, or he will be providing synergy for Claw on that speed crew. So number 10, here we're bringing our PVEers back in. This officer did not previously have a slot on the last list, but we'll mention her because she's pretty useful for away teams and for stats. That is the other Marcus, Carol Marcus. Since we're all the way down to number 10 on the list, and I believe fifth for our PVE people, you'll likely be able to gauge at this point what rank you want to get her to, whether you want to max her out or just get her to rank three or whatever at this point. 
for your own purposes. And for our PVPers, somewhere around this point, you'll also want to go ahead and finish pushing your Trinity, Battle Triangle, Triad, whatever you want to call them, officers, to rank 4 and 5. So the 10 slot is where it gets kind of messy, depending on what your real priority in the game is, but that is pretty much the end of our top 10 on this list. So what about the other 9 officers currently available? The Battle Triad officers counted as 3 out of the 21 officers for those checking my math. Kirk, Gorkon, Nero, and Khan can all be relatively easily sourced via faction recruit tokens or threat from beyond slash swarm Sunday events. So they've been intentionally left off of this list here. So may choose to go ahead and max those officers first through the transporter pattern store so that you can start getting transporter pattern charts back for them. But in my opinion, you'll get a lot more out of them if you put these transporter patterns towards officers that are otherwise unsourceable and pick these up a little bit slower. Gary Mitchell is the only officer with all three of his officer traits geared towards the Explore Galactic Barrier away team assignment to help you get those TOS Spock shards when you crit it. So if that's important to you, you may want to consider working him into your own personal priority list. Harry Mud, Eurydice, and Meth Mud all have niches in the current meta, but you can also begin sourcing those semi-reliably at, I think it's the known associate level of the Outlaw Faction store, through your Outlaw Recruit chests. The comment section, please keep me honest at this point, because I am not 100% on that. Finally, we have Sela. Sela. Seriously though, she's not bad. Her captain's maneuver isn't the most amazing. It increases critical hit damage by 50% without synergy while you are cloaked. And her officer ability is pretty much the inverse of Khan and can pretty much eliminate critical hits and therefore allow the danger of hull breach crews when you strike an enemy player's ship enough times in battle when they're not using Khan. Because if they are using Khan, it'll be very difficult for you to completely eliminate him. You can definitely slow him down, but it's unlikely you'll completely negate him because many players will have a maxed out con before you've got a maxed out Sela. She's also a high attack officer, which is great for stats and away team assignments, but currently she sits at the bottom of my personal transporter pattern priority list. So there you have it, my updated tier list for transporter patterns in the game as it currently stands for PvP, PvE, and our hybrid players. How does that compare to your own list? Do you mostly find yourself agreeing, or do you feel that I'm completely overlooking some of these officers' utilities and longevity? Drop those comments down below, of course, for me and for the rest of the community. Leave this video a like. You would not believe how much that helps the channel. Subscribe for more content like this, and ask everyone that you know to do the same. We do have ways to financially back the channel in the link to the description and in other places, so if you are interested in that, please feel free to do so. No donation of any size goes unnoticed or unappreciated here. Thank you to all of you who have done so in the past, present, and will do so in the future. We've also recently kicked off a weekly live stream here on YouTube, currently on Fridays from 9pm to 11pm Eastern Standard Time, but that might get moved around a little while we try to find our sweet spot for the community here. We'll start off with some Star Trek Fleet Command questions and shenanigans before moving on to our game of choice for the week, which you guys are more than welcome to join, crash, watch, whatever you want to do when we get there. Check out the videos coming up on the screen here momentarily for more Star Trek Fleet Command and other gaming content. Remember the words of Elnor and choose to live. Now is the only moment. Live long and prosper, my friends, and we'll see you next time.